Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move. And for today's episode in the Liverpool Live Liverpool series, we're back against Watford as promised. So, uh, Watford, very interesting team to take on, of course. But uh, the reason why we're showing today's episode more because of uh, the other games that are going on in the league that could potentially define how the season goes on. So, uh, I'm sure you've noticed already, we're four points ahead of Manchester United, uh, quite safely in the Champions League zone. So, we've met the board expectations, but once more, we're trying to aim for the title. So, Chelsea are 12 points away, very difficult, of course. 11 games to go, and uh, you would think it's unlikely to happen. But I have a little bit of hope, just based on Manchester City and the way they've, they performed last season, where... They seem to also have the title wrapped up very much so like Chelsea, but uh, towards the end they really had, uh, they stumbled a lot and ended up just winning the title by a single point. Uh, but anyways, in terms of Manchester City themselves, I think, alright, so they still kept Pep Guardiola, but I think he's under huge pressure and uh, you can't blame them really. By the way, in terms of ourselves, doing well so far, I mean, uh, three draws and two, two losses are the difference between ourselves and Chelsea. Uh, and of course we've got the best form in the league uh, compared to everyone else and uh, if we just keep up there is some hope of catching Chelsea if not a reality then at least we can keep going as it I think we are by the looks of it the division's best goal scorers uh, unfortunately for ourselves we're also we, we're not the best in terms of conceding we're third best which isn't too bad uh, but uh, I guess you know, maybe we could try and keep things tighter a little bit better. Um, but yeah, in terms of what happened since the last episode, it's not too many games. We did show you that 8-0 defeat of City. If you missed it out, then definitely go check out that episode. Such an incredible one, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we managed to go on a nice little winning run here. Beat Leeds 3-0 through Mane, Lacazette uh, with the brace. And uh, all three goals coming towards the end of the game where it really started to feel like we weren't going to get anything out of it at all. Mane and Akaza were actually substitutions. And Lalana, Kent and Rigi, they're all laying us down on that occasion. But against Sheffield Wednesday, no one let us down. <laughs> Lalana and Rigi, who were both accused of doing so last time, grabbed a brace and a hat-trick each. Salah also scoring a 6-0 defeat in the FA Cup 5th round has helped us go into 6th round where we face Middlesbrough, who of course currently in the Premier Division and not in the Champions uh, sh Champions Championship sorry uh, as they are in the when you first start off a, a save of course um, but yeah hopefully we can still beat them and get into the semi-finals it should be a relatively easy tie uh, the expectations are on us winning um, but obviously we have to do that first before we can do anything else uh, and just to remind you guys, the board expectation is just to reach the semi-final as well. But if we can get that trophy, it'd be a nice one to have. Against Bayern, we managed to beat them 2-1 away from home. The truth is, it should have been 2-0. Uh, the Kent and Lacazette also, uh, both scoring uh, towards the end of either half. But Müller managed to score in the 80 86th minute through some poor defending from Robertson. Uh, I think it was a bit of a silly back pass and we've kind of given... Byron a lifeline there so I, will, I'm, I am considering showing you guys the game um, on the uh, the second knockout the first knockout round second leg um, but I think today's game is a bit more important in terms of the Premier League and uh, if we do go through into the quarterfinals then we can start showing you some Champions League games which might be interesting of course against the possibly some really decent opposition as well so uh, you know this is our first hurdle if we get over it then we can start showing you some other results but anyways in terms of some overall stats I'm sure you've noticed as well like is that is our top goal scorer great to see uh, he's just become you know just joined us this season we've got Salah average rating still as as well as most assists so he's you know not letting us down with that playmaker role whatsoever still Keto with pass completions kind of similar and the rest goes with the same of the other stats as we showed in the last episode um, so I think we can just go ahead and get straight into today's game. We still have the same tactics, which has, you know, been working for us really well so far. Uh, we're starting to get some nice little partnerships all across the pitch. We've got the inside forwards with their complete wing backs, uh, starting to get nice little green lines. The centre back pairing as well are, are having a nice little partnership. Chan and uh, Georgina themselves could have a better one, but uh, it's decent enough, and the more they play together, the better, of course. And Alana with Origi, so we're getting nice little lines here. Uh, partnerships all over the pitch and the more the team gel the better we seem to perform so uh, let's hope it continues I think we can go on and kick off um, just to give you an idea no huge injuries but Alex uh, Pablo and Chamberlain all back soon enough within a week's time all three of them so nothing too big uh, but we can definitely 
do with the added depth, of course, as the season becomes more t intense. So, Liverpool versus Watford, the fixture of the month. I actually forgot to show you um, the other Premier League division fixtures. So, Manchester United face Arsenal, which is very important for us, of course. If Arsenal beat Manchester United, we even draw them. We go further ahead and really start to solidify second spot rather than just the Champions League spot itself. Uh, Chelsea face Middlesbrough, which isn't a huge game itself. Uh, let's see who else Tottenham play. Who do Tottenham play? Maybe that's tomorrow. Yeah, Tottenham play Manchester City, which is a big one as is. And of course, Stoke, who are outside of the Champions League spots, face the West Ham side who, you know, have to worry a little bit about the people behind them. But of course, they're more so aiming on trying to get forward. But really, it's just about us performing to get today against Watford. Actually, that's a bit of a weird one. That's not, um, that's not the correct one. That's 16th March. I've been talking about the wrong one the whole time. All right, let's go back. 2nd March, there you go. All right, so it's actually Manchester United against Leicester. That's not the big one. I think the big one was actually the one that we're looking for, which is Chelsea play Tottenham. So very big, very important. Uh, Tottenham are going to try and solidify their spot. That's on 6th March, though, so they'll already know how everyone else has performed. Um, and, uh, you know, if Tottenham can do us a favour, that'd be great. And uh, it'll be, that's what makes it even more important to defeat Watford here today. Anyways, I think we can now finally get into the game and uh, let the players warm up and we can talk more about who's starting and who's not. But of course, like I always mentioned, it's all based on form and fitness. Uh, so Rigi still gets the nod because he, you know, even he, even though he did perform that one game, his overall form is really well. He's picked up hugely in recently, 14 starts, 11 goals, average rating of 7.14. But the truth is, Lacazette like is very unfortunate to miss out on today's side considering how well he's performed in recent games. We've got Kent, the ever-present left winger, uh, getting far more appearances than I expected this season and Mane has to be you know, very worried about his spot in the starting 11. Salah out right, Lalana in behind with Pablo injured of course. We've got Jorginho and Chan making the midfield pairing which isn't actually our first choice pairing but the pair have done really well. Keita being unhappy and Henderson not really uh, enjoying the anchorman role so much. Uh, these two have come in and done really well for us in recent games. Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold are technically supposed to be our backups, but again, just too too good of a form to drop. And in fact, Trent Alexander-Arnold uh, picking up the captaincy for today's game. So we're playing a 4-2-3-1 asymmetric as always, but uh, Watford are playing a 4-1-4-1, so a bit defensive. We're going to have to try and break them down. Some decent players here like Gray will definitely cause us trouble. You've got Hughes, you've got Chalaba, English talent. Kapuwe is a very decent defensive midfielder as well, uh, but I think their defence is there for the taking if we are smart enough. And of course, their goalkeeper isn't the best goalkeeper ever. And in fact, I think he's a championship goalkeeper, which is a bit of a surprise to see him in the Premier League club. There you go. And susceptible to the injury, so that's good to see. But I think they just brought him in for their experience. And uh, let's have a quick look at how many goals have conceded this season, actually. Let's see if we have any hope. Actually, I'm going to the wrong place. Just in the Premier League is all I want to know. All right, goal difference of six. Can we see the entire table uh, against where are you, Watford? Conceded 37. That's not too bad, I suppose. I mean, Leeds are the ones who are absolutely horrible, but that's a different thing entirely. Anyways, um, let's try and give a bit of an inspiring team talk, see if we can get our players to continue the winning run. They'll have to stay focused here today because we've got on such a nice little run there uh, that players can tend to be a bit complacent. So they look ready, not necessarily ready to walk through walls, which is the team talk um, aim that you want to get, the effect that you want to have on the players. But sometimes it's decent enough, and if necessary, we can always tell them off, of course, at half time. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. So Watford gets going. Hopefully it's us who open the scoring first. Lalana goes back to Robertson, very close to going outside, but thankfully finds Kent, and he can try and deliver it across. Rigi! Very early on, 1-0, and you can't ask for a better start. Question is, can we have a better finish? One minute, one goal. Uh, closer to two minutes, to be fair. But uh, if we can already have the three points wrapped up in the bag, then this might have been a bit easier than I thought. Having said that, Watford getting him back into the game a little bit by the looks of it, and uh, they still remain defensive, but I think the more they try and come out at us later on when they're going to have to try and win the game, 
uh, we'll probably have a bit more luck in front of goal. Having said that, Trent comes down, delivers the ball to Boxerigi again. This time hits the post and Cavasele can get there ahead of him to clear that for the corner, but that really should have been 2-0. And Origi is a bit unlucky not to have a brace or ready. For someone who's playing as a trequartista, I mean, he's doing really well to get into, like the trequartista role explains, which is getting into spots that are, you know, where he's free to, uh, in, in space and, uh, you know, can cause damage. At the same time, he's really still playing more like an advanced forward where he's sort of spearheading attacks, getting into the box, making runs, uh, and uh, really the very traditional fox in the box kind of uh, striker by the looks of it. But. So long as he's performing, then uh, there's no real concerns for me. And um, <clears throat> I think we'll need to continue our, you know, our good, good goal so far. I mean, good game. Uh, we need to add to it, though. We need the second one if we're going to have, you know, if we want to be comfortable. But Watford making it very difficult for us by the looks of it. Just those two highlights so far. And we'll need more. But yeah. Guess nothing too threatening from Watford is the good news as well. But uh, maybe Salah can help us add. Chan to Georgino. Finds Origi in a bit of space here. What can he do? Really good ball out to Kent. Takes it first time when he had a bit of time there. And possibly could have grabbed us a second. And uh, I think Watford are surviving. Just barely. Either way, now we can try and go again. Chan to Lalana. The attacking midfielder plays at Salah. What I really like about the attacking midfielder role, especially as it says in the description, that's a bit silly for Marigi, but let me quickly show you the description, why I like what I like about it. So, uh, a lot of people don't like it because it's sort of a generic role, I suppose, but if you just have a look, I've gone to the wrong place. If you just have a look at the description of the role itself, Attacking midfielder operates higher up the pitch than a standard midfielder, so you cannot drive into space from deep in the manner of an attacking central midfielder. So the good thing about this is, like, unlike an advanced playmaker, he won't necessarily drop into, you know, some space or anything. Uh, so he's always going to be forward for you. So that's a good thing because you don't want him coming in and messing up with your central midfielders and you know getting into each other's space. Um, and at the same time, you know, requiring excellent technical and mental skills, his roles to fashion chances for himself and others in the final third. That's great. But this is the best bit for me. Before the opposition defenders reduce the time and space he has to make the play. So he's supposed to technically be quick on the ball. And that's perfect for players who, or for, you know, for, uh, managers who are trying to play sort of quick football sometimes. But at the same time, it's just good if you, if you need to move the ball quicker. So um, it's not just about higher tempo. It's also about making sure that the attacking midfielder doesn't waste any time on the ball. And uh, when someone tries to close him down, he's able to release it rather than just try and hold on to it or anything of the sort. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a bit of an underrated role, but of course you need to know, how, just like with anything else, you need to know how to use it and you know whether it suits your system or not. But it is a very decent role, uh, and uh, you know attacking midfielders overlap the same way that shadow strikers overlap. Um, unlike you know advanced playmakers, trequartistas uh, in the attacking midfield strata at least. And the other role in Ganche is uh, all three of those roles don't actually overlap. And in fact, I think Ganche is one of those roles that hardly moves. And so, he, you know, he's a bit of a pivot. And so you need to make sure he has a lot of good movement around him. Otherwise, you're not making the most out of him. Anyways, it's half time and we can try and inspire more from our players. I think nothing too bad. I am happy with the performance, but I do want to see more. So we can tell that in the players team talk. You weren't that bad, but I believe you can improve. And I think... That works better than the players, there you go, ready to walk through walls. But yeah, hopefully they can avoid the complacency. I'm a bit unhappy with our efficiency in front of goal. We had three clear-cut chances, let alone any half chances. And uh, we've only scored one of them. Should be 3 nil up. And if uh, Watford managed to score a goal, we're going to be ruining those missed chances. And more often than not in football, if you miss your chances, your opposition team will punish you. Overall, though, we performed well. I mean, the only standout is Origi. Kent Gerald grabbing a little nice assist there as an inside forward. But some underperforming players like Salah, disappointingly, Chan's not having the best of games, but he's an anchor man, so I'm not hoping too much. And Gomez, who I kind of called off earlier, uh, is on a 7 rating, his best performing player in his team. 
So let's try and make some substitutions. We've got Lacazette on the bench, uh, Henderson, Mane and Keita, all first choice players. So they can make changes really. They can uh, turn the game on its head. I think we're going to go for that again. Kent for uh, Mane for Kent and Lacazette for Origi to try and grab a second goal. I would love to take Salah though off, so I'm going to try and do that later. Switch Lalana to the advanced playmaker role there. He's very comfortable. And maybe bring on Keita uh, or, you know, move Jorginho up into the attacking midfield role instead. instead. And uh, maybe you can finally grab a second because uh, Watford are really holding on. Even here in the observations from my assistant manager, despite roles in front of goal, we seem to be leading. So we definitely are struggling in front of goal and that's why I had to bring on Lacazette. And uh, maybe Gomez can find Lacazette here. Instead, he goes to his central defender partner, Wallace. Lobs it towards Robertson. Cuts inside and fires Jorginho. And Mane, the substitute on the ball. He needs to try and prove his worth, having, you know, given how Kent's played. Salah trying to up his performance, and he does well to find Trent. Can he deliver into the box, though? Jorginho rises, and it's just past the post. The goalkeeper made it look closer than it was, to be honest. And uh, Watford are going to try things, try switching things up here with Troy Deeney coming on, and he's definitely someone to look out for. So I wanted to take off Salah, but looks of it though, Georgina's really struggling. Might have had a bit of a knock, so I do want to take him off off instead. Keita can still do the damage from the box box midfield role, and Salah will have to step it up, otherwise he risks being dropped in the next game if his form is poor. Not just today's performance, of course. Sometimes that tends to happen, you know. Um, Christian Capacelli and Craig Cascot have been dominant in the air. Alright, dominance in the air is not a worry. I know I don't have too many players who can head the ball well. Um, so maybe we can go for low crosses and see if that inspires a bit of a better result. Because so far, we're making Watford look better than they are. We should have this game already wrapped up. Lalana though, really good through ball to Lacazette. Can he finish? Instead, it's straight at Gomez, and that's the fourth clear-cut chance that we've had today. All right, Lalana, help us out here. Instead, he does poorly, but he's going to get a second opportunity to deliver into the box. Goes outside to Emery Chan instead, and Anchorman finds his box-to-box -box midfield partner. Decent shot from outside the box, but again, straight at Gomez. And uh, by the looks of things, we've actually he's actually got a 7.1 rating solely based on saving shots in front of him. So, 18 minutes, Watford not really coming out to play by switching up their formation. They've changed going from defensive to regular 4-1-4-1, but they're still the same formation. And I think they, they look to be quite happy to just hold on to... Alright, there you go, now they've gone to a 4 5 one so we have to be a bit careful here. Immediately, a highlight after that change. Can we hold them out? Wallace to Lalana. Looks like they're, you know, them going more adventurous has helped us hit them on the counter-attack. And that's exactly where Mane plans to punish them. Can he deliver into the box? Find a teammate. Oh, penalty instead. And Lacazette is the one who's going to be taking the penalty and benefiting from Mane being taken down. Uh, but if he can continue his goal scoring run, that'd be great for us. And uh, if Origi continues to fail, we can bring on Lacazette. So that'd be good. Great. So five <laughs> click cut chances, one goal, four minutes extra time or uh, injury time, and uh, Watford are still coming at us. They might punish us for that missed penalty there. Chalaba on the ball. Goes to Decore. Mm, Gomez cuts it out, but still Chalaba again, and they're going to keep coming at us. Goodmanson to Dini. Hits the post. And I thought that was going to go out, but hit the post instead. And uh, do have to warn our players to concentrate. They're not complacent, but they've just been incredibly inefficient in front of goal. And we need our defenders to save us here today because our attackers have been disappointing. Like I said, with a 6.1 rating, 92 minutes. Watford are really coming at us. Maybe we should have gone to contain, but it's too late to consider anything. And Mane tries to get the counter-attack going once more. What can the French star Lacazette do this time? Can he make up for his penalty miss? Takes his man on, beats him. Can he deliver into the box, though? Where's his teammates? Mane! That's six clear-cut chances and just a single goal. And Watford are lucky that we haven't destroyed them the way we destroyed Manchester City and Sheffield Wednesday. Wednesday, Lalana to Mane, and the referee should blow his whistle any time now. There you go. 1-0 at Anfield. Three points is all that matters. And I think my front four should be putting that performance behind themselves because that's hugely disappointing. Gomez rightfully getting the man of the match the perform performance or... Uh, 
award, I suppose. And uh, he's just proving me wrong, basically. But don't think I should be telling my players good win. A bit of a let off. They're fired up, and hopefully they'll be switched on uh, for the next game. Because today was definitely not good enough. I think better teams would have definitely punished us, and we just we just have to be a bit thankful that Watford didn't try and come out and really play with us. Uh, they were trying to be too defensive and just went attacking the last five minutes of the game. And um, if they had done that earlier, we might have been in more trouble. But let's see how bad Keita's injury is. Just 9 to 12 days, so not too bad. We've got, um, you know, Georgina performing well anyways. And if need be, Henderson can play as a box-to-box -box midfielder more than an anchorman. In fact, I think it's his more comfortable role. Uh, let's have a look at Henderson. Alright, yeah, box-to-box -box midfielder. You'd argue that his finishing could do a bit better with, uh, but overall he does have some decent stats for box-to-box -box midfielder. And the truth is, Henderson can be used in a number of different roles. Anchorman's definitely not one of the best ones, but it's where we need him to be. And he's got the stats, the attributes for it. It's just a bit lacking in heading. Uh, I think, you know, ball-winning midfielders were where he was best when we were using him in that role. Uh, and I think he could be even better as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And he's just unfortunate that we're overstocked in that department, thanks to Liverpool's decision to buy Naby Keita. Uh, before my arrival, of course, just as you know, it's what they did in real life, of course um, But yeah, in terms of when we will be back uh, It's kind of it for March. We shouldn't be back until April, but the Bayern second uh, leg match is very tempting But I think I will stick by it and not show you that game Hopefully we do really advance into the next stage of the Champions League which start showing you some really important Champions League uh, games uh, against some top opposition as well. If we beat Bayern, then we have a nice little run here. Uh, some decent teams still in uh, SLB, Dortmund, Wolfsburg, AC Milan, Juventus, Atletico Madrid. So don't worry about us, you know, if we lose out, uh, if we beat, sorry, Bayern, that we won't get some top opposition later on. That definitely will be. The good thing is though, that PSG and Madrid are also facing each other. So those are really uh, PSG, Madrid, Bayern, uh, Liverpool. And Juventus and Madrid, I would argue, are the games that are hugely are the huge games, the important games of the Champions Cup first knockout round. Because uh, you know one of these sides basically has to drop out already. Can you imagine Madrid dropping out in the Champions League first knockout round? But anyways, uh, yeah, so that still brings us back to when we will be back. So in April, we've got these fixtures here. You would argue the most important one is the one towards the end of the month, which is Chelsea. But that's a huge run of games without showing you any episodes. So I want to try and avoid that as much as possible. Uh, possibly we could show you the FA semi cup, uh, semi final. Uh, that would be one of the cup competitions, which we, you know, uh, where we've met the expectations. So we can start showing you a cup competition. And Bayern, if we beat them as well, I reckon we'll be playing a team in April as well. So we could possibly show you one of those fixtures. But if neither, neither of these results go our way, uh, obviously that'll be very disappointing. But at the same time, we'll possibly show you that Chelsea game in the very last, last game of the season, which is against Manchester United, which can prove very pivotal, whether it's for the Champions League spot or whether Chelsea have already dropped points. And, uh, you know... Uh, if we don't beat Manchester United, we can find ourselves losing out to the title. So it's going to be a huge game regardless. In terms of Chelsea's schedule, just to have a quick look at their last remaining games. They're still yet to play Tottenham. Our only two big games, you could argue, in that schedule of ours was uh, Chelsea and United. But they still have Tottenham. Uh, City's in the FA Cup, so that doesn't really count. they got ourselves, City and Arsenal. So you would argue that they have a bit more of a difficult run-in. Um, and maybe as the pressure goes on, we'll definitely see which team truly deserves to be champions. But anyways, I think that's all for today's episode. So if, if you did enjoy it, then of course, please do hit the like button and subscribe for more Daily Football Manager 2018 content. And of course, I'd love to hear your, thumbnail, or your comments in the, or your thoughts rather in the comment section below. And uh, once again, guys, as always, thank you all very much for watching.